All right, everybody, this is Kyle Sasser, Great Things Tampa Bay, and I'm here with Jimmy Murray, who I'm going to let introduce himself. Thank you, Kyle. Hey, I'm Jimmy Murray, a recent resident of the Tampa Bay area. I love it here in Tampa Beach City, right? Uh, I'm a Twitter, Instagrammer, blogger, comedian. I do video game commentary for local nonprofits in the area, and I dabble a little bit into the artificial intelligence scene, which is really going to reshape the Tampa Bay area, and I'm looking forward to it. Yep, and we are here at the Attic in downtown Tampa, and we're actually one floor above uh, Tampa Wave, which, uh, do, uh, do you know what Tampa Wave is? That is correct. It is a startup incubator. Basically, what that means is if, you've, if, you, if you're a Mark Zuckerberg and you've built kind of your minimal viable product, your, your new software service or your product or anything that can make like a million or a billion dollars pretty easily, you, uh, you pitch your idea to the Tampa Bay Wave. They give you some offices. You, you make the product better and you start pitching to more investors and you get your Series A and your Series B funding. So it's basically, it's, 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 it's how you get the seed money to make yourself a billionaire. Yeah, it's good. This is a good follow on to the, uh, the startup bus episode. We just, <laughs> I just really, um, so Recent transplant to Tampa, how long have you been here? I've been here since April of 2017, so that would, that would put me, I think, at about 16 months. All right, and I feel like you definitely have kind of kind of hit the ground running here with with all wheels spinning like you kind of kind of taken off a little bit that is correct i i came here with uh, well no job prospects my my wife has the lovely luxury of being able to work from home and so we, we got here and and moved into our, our little you know two-bedroom apartment and I, I had nothing, so I was like, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna explore the things that I've wanted to do." And this it was all part of an email that I had sent to Lenovo, my previous employer. I'm gonna try Twitch. I'm gonna try YouTube. I'm gonna try blogging. I'm gonna try podcasting, and I did. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try AI. I did all of these things just to stay busy to keep my my mind away from the the dark, depressing "I'm not contributing to society" kind of thoughts. And I, I did what I had to, you know, to keep to to maintain that pace. <laughs> all right, good. So, what uh, what what occupies your days currently? Right now, mainly the uh, the kid friendly network. I'm the voice actor and narrator on Chris Kramitzos's kid friendly podcast network. We have six shows: uh, Joke of the Day, Animal Fun Facts, Dinosaur Fun Facts, History Fun Facts, Geography Fun Facts, and Disney. Get this Fun Facts. <laughs> I see a trend. All right, so take us. Uh, just, just let's just pick the first one that you did, and uh, just tell tell the listeners what it's about, what you do, like who the target audience is, all, like what the idea is. So clearly, uh, it's it's in the title joke of the day. So we we do three three puns targeting around uh, seven to thirteen year olds, people who would who are kind of learning what humor is, but maybe uh, wouldn't get like the deeper humor of stand up or improv. And uh, so we pick a uh, we ideate a topic, we pick a topic, and then I I scour the internet for for influence and inspiration, and then I. Then I, 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 I attach my own spin so that it always has my own voice and authorship on it. And uh, and then we, we publish and release. And we're, we're up to, uh, I think we just crossed the 45,000 download mark yesterday. We had we had like 700 people listen to our show yesterday. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, for, so for those of you that uh, aren't aware, that is a very impressive number of downloads. Because you've only been doing this for how long? Since the end of April. And for a show that's... You, you heard me say it's three jokes, so it literally takes a minute. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's absolutely astounding. Um, I promise you that Great Things Tampa Bay is nowhere near <laughs> nowhere near that. Someday, I'm going to get to that listenership, but uh, currently not. <laughs> so, do you enjoy doing that? It's a blast. I I get to put on my resume that I, I write jokes and I. I upload them publish them i do all the editing i actually write scripts to assist me with all that so i get i get to say that i've done like eight or nine different things so if anybody ever needs me on like an ep you know if you're there 11 o'clock news hour looking at you wtsp then you know I, action news 28 heads up this is jimmy murray for <laughs> action news 28 yeah. so uh so you mentioned chris kermitzos um who i think i've also mentioned on the podcast can you give us a rundown of who he is and kind of what he does here in in tampa bay uh, Chris Kermitzos is your is your focal. He's the Tampa Bay connector. He is well versed into many aspects of business. His uh, wife has a very lovely podcast, and he he just he, he's a he's a wealth of knowledge and resources. And he uh, his his big claim to fame is the it's not called Podfest Expo. Oh my gosh, Podfest Multimedia Expo. <laughs> gosh, there it is, which we he has in Orlando every year, and it's uh it's the great unificator. It has the biggest podcast family. We attract people as far as Australia. Yeah. And there's, I went to the one last year. There's, or this year, there's thousands of people there. Oh yeah, oh it was, it was a blast, and I, I had so much fun meeting everybody and displaying off my little simple business card. I, I was rushed to make it, and so it was just like this, <laughs> this courier font. It's just just Jimmy like in typewriter font, Jimmy period. And people, yeah, you should have went with Comic Sans. There. <laughs> I see what you did there. 
I did a facial expression at first, and then I realized I'm on a podcast, so it, it didn't translate well. Uh, there you go, there you go. So, uh, so you do the podcast, and obviously it's geared for you know kids, jokes. Uh, tell us about your, your background in comedy. When I was 16 years old, I, I moved to North Carolina in pursuit of just a, a better life, <laughs> which is... Wow, that's very dramatic. But yeah, I, I moved in with my dad who said, I'm going to get you started in stand-up and improv classes. So I, Raleigh happens to be the home of what used to be a, a very big comedy club, one of the top 10 comedy clubs as voted by USA Today back in 2001. So I should probably stop saying that it's a top 10 comedy club. But I, I started taking stand-up classes there. And then a nearby club, Comedy Sports, which changed its name to Comedy Works, was, was my improv resource. So all throughout high school and through most of college, I was doing stand-up on Wednesday and improv on Saturdays. Yeah, that's pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty hectic schedule. Uh, yeah, so you do, so you do comedy and you do the podcast and you do some voiceover work too. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I'm involved in several Facebook groups and whenever somebody needs uh, me to act out as, a, needs somebody to act out as a character, I, for a while I just had hadn't had a lot to do during this like so I'll, I'll i'll do my best to be this this guy from atlanta who's a garbage picker or whatever and <laughs> so here does this sound right and he's like no that's, that's perfect <laughs> people are really i thought i thought the uh the audio community would be very discerning about about the way i i, I act about voices but as long as you as long as you commit to an accent or a dialect people are, are very forgiving yeah. and keep it consistent that is correct <laughs> yeah and we do have some other podcasters here who are in the um, the fictional realm? I forget what that's called. What's, you know, that category? I believe you're, the term you're looking for is audio drama. That's the one. Yeah. So we do have two or three of them. I've been trying to get them to come to the, to the meeting. Cause we don't have everyone right. that's there is usually like non-fictional. Um, you know, like there's, uh, the can the cancer guy, the computer guy, the, the real estate guy, the, ta <laughs> the Tampa guy, which is me. Um, but we're like the audio drama section is really underrepresented at the Florida Podcasters Association. So if you're listening to this and you know who you are <laughs> and you do an audio drama, please come out to the meeting. What amazes me is that. And also hire Jimmy to do some voices. Absolutely. <laughs> I can do I can do your bassy voices. I can do kind of your higher pitch voices. I have a little bit of a good falsetto. I can I can be a British nanny. Um, Wow, that was that was painful. I'm so sorry. We're putting that on the resume. There it is. I can I can be Miss Beakley from the old DuckTales. There it is. Uh, audio drama as a genre, I just podcast lends itself to that, and the the accessibility of all the tools and resources uh, supporting the ecosystem. It's it's really poised to become a number one thing. So if you have an idea that you've waited to execute and you're scared to do it, just uh, we're in the no excuses part of the curve of creating stories and dramas. So just 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 do it. Yep. And uh, yeah, basically, for those that don't know, an audio drama is basically a radio, like the old radio soap operas. So it's kind of all come back full circle to the original radio storytelling with the sound effects and, you know, the creaky doors and the, the coconut clops. <laughs> Kyle, do you remember an old cartoon called Gerald McBoing Boing? Nope, I do not. Okay, so it's one of it's voted one of the 50 top cartoons of all time but it's a cartoon character that can only speak in sound effects and so when you said that that's just what it reminds me of uh, by the end of that episode he that that is that is his job he's got like a million dollar radio show uh but is he, like he's bullied at the beginning which i guess uh, in our current state of cyberbullying is kind of relevant but uh, we don't we don't have to talk about that yeah. well there were two nerds we can relate <laughs> ha yes uh, you're a nerd right I mean, you're wearing a Mario shirt, I just assumed. Sorry. It, it, I, I'm sorry to presume. Let's. Did you assume my nerdiness? Uh, philosophically, Kyle, I've always defined a nerd as somebody who's heavily involved in math and a geek as somebody really just in, in, in some sort of fandom or mythos. So the Mario, yes, would really describe me as a geek, but I did open saying that I'm into artificial intelligence, so nerd me up, man. Yep, which uh, excellent segue, by the way. So tell us a little about, about the artificial intelligence, and then I'm going to ask you some questions on it absolutely as i was working at lenovo i i automated my job away because i i figured that copying and pasting data between excel spreadsheets was was boring and i could probably and Le lenovo for those who don't know is it's a it's a big laptop corporation they are they started in china and their headquarters right now on the american side is in raleigh north carolina mm -hmm. 
And from there, so after I automated all my work, I didn't, I didn't have a lot to do except to automate other people's works, and then they didn't have a lot to do. So we, we spent a lot of time at the, or at the coffee counter, either on our floor or downstairs, and I started studying artificial intelligence. I started noticing a distinct pattern in the way I wrote jokes, and I thought there might be some kind of mathematical relationship, or at least some way to where I didn't have to ideate things uh, from the back of my head, because that's, that's really the, the hardest part for me is, is creating material from nothing. So that sent me down a rabbit hole into uh, Udacity, which is... Uh, uh, resources for you can use for for deep learning so artificial intelligence at a high level is just a bunch of complicated math that allows for you to instead of writing a series of if then statements uh, you let the you let the computer figure that out mm -hmm. and <laughs> and I have not fully automated comedy yet but I, I I believe I found the vector I want to go on right now is the, the hardest part is the the data wrangling phase which is the phase one of any artificial intelligence project yep. you have you have to feed the beast that is correct and it is, the comedy is uh huge right. so your artificial intelligence work is mainly centered around like comedy and language and and that sort of thing that is correct i mostly use what's called natural language processing it's uh abbreviated nlp for short and my my favorite library is nltk which stands for I think it's a natural tool language kit. I want to say that's what it stands for. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, there's a number, uh, as, as these projects are going online, people are writing APIs for them. Somebody wrote uh, a Python library called RhymeBrain, which automatically finds what's called a, a portmanteau, which is where you take, if, if a word ends the way as another word begins, you smush them together. So most people call it a smush, right? <laughs> and so somebody wrote a library for that. Google wrote word to vec which it, it maps out the relationships between these same words, and you can actually use it like, it'll... it'll if you want the female version of a king, it'll actually pump out queen. So really it's a, a matter of either writing your own tools or, or finding what's already out there. Yeah. And there's been a lot of interesting work going on in this sector. Like I know that they have um, artificial intelligence that will write like baseball box scores. Like they will interpret a game and tell you like what, they'll write the story about what's happened in the game. It's amazing that you say that, Kyle, because <laughs> like I've, I, I had been doing fantasy football for another years, a number of years. And I noticed they there was a I noticed a copyright a copyright automated analytics. They would take they would take all, everybody's scores and they would like rate rate you like you're the worst fantasy in the world or something. And it was just it was reverse engineering. I'm like no, this is genius. There 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 is absolutely a way to to, to predefine all of these uh, relationships between all the scores and the stats and to. to to qualitatively say you suck at football and here's your sucky football player like hey you should probably find a new a new hobby <laughs> yeah right so obviously writing jokes a little bit of a niche thing um Absolutely. do you have a name for your artificial intelligence is bot is that the right term sure 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 i've been i've been calling it the very self-serving jimmy in the short term kind of the <laughs> is it jimmy is it jimmy with a one it's it's jimmy with a one that is correct <laughs> Uh, lo all lowercase. I just guessed, but that's awesome. And uh, it's it's uh, kind of like the Beatle. What do you call your haircut? I call it Arthur, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, I don't, know, I don't know. So has Jimmy written a joke yet? Jimmy has not written a joke yet. I, I didn't realize how huge of an undertaking I was getting into <laughs> when I when I started this. Uh, at this point, uh, all it's done is refine the way I write humor, which is, I mean, which is a good start. But yeah. uh, the, the biggest issue is teaching a computer what the outputs need to be. And for that, I need a bunch of inputs. And I, I just realized the method that I want to use to go forward with that. The fundamental thing of artificial intelligence is that it relies on a series of probabilities. And when you, when you have, I guess, a setup or a premise of your joke, it actually can go a, a multitude of ways. And uh, one of the issues with artificial intelligence is that you can, what you want is like a 99.9% .9 match rate uh, as you're getting your inputs and outputs and your relationships mapped out. If you have 100%, something's gone wrong. But like, uh, what what happens is if I like if I put why did the chicken cross the road and it just returned like a series of exclamation marks, like that's <laughs> that's that's not funny. Or or or, or every or every joke has the punchline to get to the other side. Like I I didn't I did something wrong when I taught this computer how to write comedy. So. Has it kicked out anything like unusual or hilarious? <laughs> If it kicked out something hilarious, I think I would be a billionaire right now. <laughs> the most unusual thing that it kicked out, it was amazing. It was like, it was like why did the ocean wave? And it, it, the, the thing returned, like, because it was a flag. And I'm like, oh, well, I see why you did that. But it's not, it's not the, the, the best punchline. But, but there, you, there you have it. It put, it put a link together between, the, between like a flag waving and an and a ocean wave. Absolutely. The, the <laughs> synapses were there just to, 
the contextual relationships of comedy is what makes writing a comedy bot yeah. so hard. Yeah. And it's true, like if you listen to any sort of comedy, you know that one of the hardest things is to be sort of like a foreign comedian. Like, because the, that, no, that intrinsic knowledge of language is one of the main things that makes comedy, comedy. That is correct. <laughs> uh, the rules that make uh, comedy work in the English language are going to be completely different in a different foreign language. The way we, we make puns, uh, a, a pun for, for us, like the, 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 the number four in the preposition four, right? It's not, it's not going to work. Yeah. In the, and, like, the reason Germans are so unfunny is because their language is so exacting. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I, was that, I don't, that might have been a little racist. <laughs> uh, it's it's funny you bring that up because Germans do not consider themselves funny, <laughs> and and there is a lot to that. Like the the, the way their their words and, and syntax links does not lend itself to hilarity. So you'll find Germans more based in in the visual space, which is fine. Yeah. Which is okay. It has its own appeal. Yes. <laughs> but we're not talking about people with lampshades on their head here talk about language <laughs> sorry had to had to go to the trope there it is <laughs> cool. all righty well jimmy anything else going on in your life any shout outs any uh any requests any requests free free bird i guess is the <laughs> is the go-to right uh Anything else that's going on? Just the, the Twitter and Instagram stuff. I'm doing a, a happiness campaign. So I, I uh, you were nominated for Best of the Bay. Yeah, who who did that? <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, creative loafing. I've been nominated for as best, incidentally, best sports writer, which I think I put that one in myself. My bad. Uh, best blogger. So I've I've been putting out uh, Onion style articles on on Medium.com because I'm some, some satire. A, a very difficult topic now. That's a very difficult craft nowadays. Yes. <laughs> It's, it's, it's so hard to find topics for satire. Uh, yeah. Well, so for me, the, the difficulty is remaining politically neutral. The, the, the way I built kind of my brand is that I'm the peacemaker. And you, you, always, go, you always go to Jimmy because you know he's not going to make... Well, you can't have, like, the, the kid-friendly deep state rant. Like, <laughs> challenge considered. <laughs> the kid, you know, the kid-friendly Infowars excerpts. Right, sure. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well then, yes, I'm a I'm a blog. I've been voted, voted best blogger and best sports blogger. I, I did write a hockey book many years ago. Nothing Tampa based. And uh, mm -hmm. full disclosure, I am a Washington Capitals fan. But caveat on that. Uh, it's, a, it's a dicey time to be a Capitals fan down here. At <laughs> asterisk. So last year, 2017, after the Capitals were in a rare form trounced in the second round, I tweeted to Tampa Bay Lightning and to Jeff Finnick, Hey, hey, I'm requesting a fan trade. So we need to get this to happen. <laughs> and uh, and and nothing came of that, so I was like, I guess I'll be a Capitals fan for another year. And uh, there I was, there I was in the country of Italy. I, they lost one game, they lost two games, they lost three games. Okay, well this this the conference finals were fun. That's that's all I needed. And then uh, and then they pulled they they pulled the stunner. What encourages me is that is that a I'm still I'm still willing to be fan traded. So if that's something you guys want to do, let's let's make it happen. I I would prefer it to be kind of public though, obviously. Uh, B, the Lightning have a solid team this year. I think the only potential enemy they have in getting to the Cup would be Toronto on the east side and then m maybe the Vegas Golden Knights again. Although I think what we'll see from them is kind of the, the Super Bowl thing, like the yeah. loser doesn't do so well the next year. <laughs> it was a bit, of a bit of a swan song with them coming in. Yeah, so I think the Lightning are going to win the Cup next year, and I, it, would, it would just light me up to... To, to be a part of that fan base, I really like. I really like what the. I, I, I can't remember what section they're in. I want to say 328, but that's where the Carolina Hurricanes sassy section sits. But there's a there's a team. There's a group of people called Kyle the Sticks of Fire. And for me, it's it's like they just MST3K the snot out of games. I'm like, that's that's where I need to be. I need to be sitting with them. Yeah, shaking there my, you go. Shaking my thunder stick and 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 making fun of everything that's going on. I I think I would have just okay. just a great role there. So yes, having some words with Thunderbug. Absolutely. <laughs> so so let's let's uh, let's just, I think it's 331, but I might be wrong. The sticks. I want to sit with the Sticks of Fire. I want to make fun of the game. I want to do commentary with you guys. I want to I want to be a season ticket holder at the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, the Capitals finally won their cup. So I don't, and I live in Tampa now. So there's like no reason for me, <laughs> there's no reason for me to be a DC fan. I'm gonna go there to watch them raise the banner. But two days later, home opener. I want to be in the front row. There you uh, go. Sticks of fire makes make it happen. Yeah. So if any <laughs> sticks of fire out there, let's let's do at least a guest spot. At least a guest spot. But uh, yeah, 
Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, short term, just uh, I'm doing the 100 Days of Happiness, so I can cosplay as one character. His name's Ness. He's from, uh, most people know him from Super Smash Brothers, but he was actually in a game before that called Earthbound, which nobody played, so that's okay. I played it. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> okay, so... It was on an emulator, though. I didn't buy it. It was I, too expensive for me to get for Christmas. I understand this. <laughs> Also, 10 points to Gryffindor. Good good night. Okay, that's amazing. I'm doing the happiness campaign because, you know, it's a it's a fun digital play on words. and It was a great way. It was a very easy way for me to create Instagram content, which really right now Twitter isn't doing so hot. Facebook isn't doing so yeah. hot. Instagram's where I need to be. And being that it's not, it, it is picture-based, I need to focus on more visual puns and visual comedies. All right, so if you like what you heard today, where can they find you at? Insta or or sticks, sticks of Fire, where can you get a hold of Jimmy at? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to tweet to me, it's at the Jimmy Murray on Instagram. It's at a while Jimmy appeared. And you can email me at talk to Jimmy Murray at gmail.com. And you can send me a Facebook request if you want. That'd be cool, too. <laughs> and that's all going to be in the show notes as well. So because we're friends on all those platforms. So that's awesome. Well, uh, last question. Where's your favorite place to eat? and Why? My favorite place to eat is Thai Fi because you get a ton of food for the price and they will they don't hold back on spices most of the time when you get you get um Asian restaurants they they have what's called the foreigner spice and they have the the Asian spice because uh us people here in, in America just we just can't handle it but uh if you ask if you ask them for what a, a normal Thai person would eat they will they will give it to you handily so uh they they hold no punches it's a great atmosphere the uh the people that work there are so friendly they get to know you on a personal level mm -hmm. And it keeps my zen. It keeps my zen. So, Tai Fi, where is that located at? That's going to be at El Prado and Mabry. All right. So, South Tampa? South Tampa, yeah. All right. So, we'll give them a shout out, too. Sure. <laughs> Jimmy, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. This is great. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh